<sighs> All right, guys, we have some serious stuff to talk about today. Which is better for you to use, M1 Finance or Robinhood? I've been getting bombarded with questions on Discord, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube comments, every social platform. Which should I use for trading? Which should I use for investing? So I figured, why not just make a video on it so whenever I do get that question, I could link you to this video. So in today's video, we're just going to be doing that, talking about M1 Finance, Robinhood, my personal experience with it, so you can actually get some perspective on what you should be using, whether you have a goal to be an investor or a trader. And honestly, you could be both of these at the same time, and I want to give you guys a plan of action for that. So if you enjoy this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving the stock market, investing, and trading. This is the channel for you, and let's get right into it. So first and foremost, guys, M1 Finance and Robinhood, these are both discount brokers, meaning that you don't have to pay a commission each time you buy, and you don't have to pay a commission each time you sell a stock, an ETF, whatever it may be, right? So this is very beneficial to those out there starting out with a smaller amount of money, whether it be $200, $500, maybe even $1,000, right? Because if you're using a traditional broker like TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, ones that charge commissions, you know, this may eat into your profit when you're starting out, right? Think about it. If you're placing a trade with, let's say, $100 and it costs $5 to buy, $5 to sell, that's already a 10% chunk out of that $100. So you're going to have to make 10% at least on that trade or that investment to break even, right? Which is why M1 Finance and Robinhood and a bunch of other discount brokers are awesome. So the goals of investors and traders, they're different, right? It's like one side of the spectrum versus the other. A trader, the whole idea of being a trader is hopping in and out of a stock quickly to capitalize on a short-term movement, whether that's an intraday play, you know, buying and selling in the same day, also known as a day trade, or a swing trade, right? Which is buying one day and maybe selling in five days, 10 days, a a month, two months, whatever it may be, right? The whole idea is to buy and capitalize in a short period of time, which in terms of investing, that's not the case, right? Investing, you're looking to buy a stock and hold it for the long term, maybe two, five years, maybe five, 10 years, whatever it may be, right? So that's kind of the distinction of an investor versus a trader. So M1 Finance and Robinhood, they cater to two of these different crowds, which is what we're going to get into right now. So if you're looking to short-term trade in the stock market, day trading, swing trading, hopping in and out of stocks, I think Robinhood is the best option for you. And let me explain why. So when you're short-term trading, the price that you get the stock, the price you buy the stock at is extremely important, right? You don't want to end up doing your technical analysis, watching price action, hitting a buy order, a market order, and then getting the stock 40 cents above from where you executed your trade, right? That might mess up your whole strategy for that trade, and that might make you lose money on that specific trade, right? The whole entire idea is to execute your trade, whether it's a market order or a limit order, and get the exact price that you want. And Robinhood allows you to do this, and on the flip side, M1 Finance does not allow you to do this. So M1 Finance has a trading window, meaning if you buy buy a stock, let's say I put an order in right now, 11.30 a.m., right? Let's say I put in an order for M1 Finance. I want to buy the specific stock. The order won't go in until the next day's trading window, which is very detrimental for those that are looking to trade stocks. Because again, guys, the whole entire idea is to get the stock at the price point that you want to get it at, the, the price point that it's currently at, at that moment in time. And M1 Finance, Finance does not let you do that. The trading window is the window of time each weekday when M1 makes all trades for user accounts. M1's trading window benefits users because it helps keep M1's management fees low since M1 is only trading one time per day. M1 is a long-term investment vehicle, not a trading platform, so timing of trades is less important. So, 
that's pretty much it in a nutshell for what is better for trading. Hands down, Robinhood, guys. You can get the stock at what price you want, whether it's a market order or a limit order, and you can set limit sells and then profit based off whatever your strategy is for that particular investment. And Robinhood also has options trading. So if you're more advanced of a trader, if you're looking to play puts, if you're looking to play call options, whatever it may be, Robinhood is definitely a vehicle that you should keep an eye on because it has commissions-free options trading as well. This is not to say Robinhood is not a good long-term investment vehicle because it definitely is, but in this video, we're breaking down trading versus investing and which one is better for what. So in my opinion, again, Robinhood is fantastic for trading stocks, especially if you're a beginner with a small amount of capital whether it's a hundred, five hundred, a thousand dollars, whatever it may be, but you can also use it for a long-term vehicle. So now let's talk about M1 Finance. So M1 Finance is definitely the platform to use if you're a buy and hold type investor. If you want to buy and hold a stock for a three years, five years, 10 years and collect those dividends and grow those dividends. And by the way, guys, I actually have a M1 Finance portfolio building playlist that is linked down below where I'm building a portfolio from absolute scratch on M1 Finance showing you guys how I'm investing. And that particular portfolio is actually a dividend growth portfolio. And I'm looking to add some more growth stocks to that portfolio in the coming future. So M1 Finance is absolutely great, guys. It's an easy easy to use platform. It allows you to build your own custom pie chart, which allows you to split whatever stocks, whatever ETFs you want based on a percentage value as to how much you want that stock or ETF to hold in your portfolio. So for example, you guys can see mine here, right? I have it split down between Johnson & Johnson, Altria, I have AT&T, I have Alibaba, I have a developed markets fund. These are stocks that I'm looking to hold long term, right? And these are companies that I'm going to be reinvesting the dividends. And one cool thing about M1 Finance is that it allows you to automate your investing if you want it to, right? If you want it to, you can have it auto invest your cash and auto rebalance your pie to fit the specific percentage percentages that you initially set, right? And since I'm more of a hands-on investor, I'm not doing this, right? I like doing it manually, but if you want to kind of build your pie and then funnel money every single week into M1 Finance, it will literally disperse that cash for you and split it into what your pie is set based on the percentages of the different stocks and ETFs in there, which is very, very awesome for a more passive investor. M1 also allows you to see hedge fund pies, right? You can see Warren Buffett, Icon Capital. You can see a bunch of these pies from really professional investors that have been in the game for a long, long time. So you can see how they allocate their money. So it's very interesting that you you can actually see breakdowns of other people's pies, you know, pies that M1 actually creates for whether you're a growth investor, dividend investor, you know, if you're looking to retire in 20, 30 years, it's very interesting how you can use all of these features to kind of help and assist you in building your own portfolio. So the gist of it, guys, is that M1 Finance is definitely the better option if you're looking to long-term invest and you don't really care about what price you get the stock in that particular day, right? It won't matter if you get, let's say, Johnson & Johnson at $130 versus $130.50, right? It really wouldn't matter because long-term here, you're going to most likely come out on top, you know, if you're picking good quality companies that are supposed to grow over time. So if you're looking to invest and trade at the same time, maybe it'd be best to have all of your money in Robinhood, right? Because Robinhood, again, it allows you to buy at that particular time period, and you can also buy and hold stocks for the long term, right? But let's say you're strictly looking to long-term invest. I really like the way M1 Finance is set up, the pie function, the way that it's very, very passive. You can just deposit money in, and it splits the money accordingly based on your pie. I really, really like that, right? But at the end of the day, guys, it's all about 
personal experience. And me, I've used both Robinhood and M1 Finance, and I'm honestly leaning towards more M1 Finance at this point, which is why I'm building out that portfolio on M1 Finance because of these features that I just talked about. I really find it helpful, and I really like the way everything is laid out. But don't get me wrong, if I'm doing some options trading, if I'm looking to maybe short-term trade on a small account, sure, I'd go on Robinhood, and I'll do some options trading. I'll do some short-term trading there. But overall, if you're looking to short-term trade, Robinhood, long-term invest, M1 Finance. And hey, you can even use both if you want to. It doesn't really matter. It all just comes down to your goals and what you like better in terms of these platforms. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did find some value in it, feel free to go down below, hit the like button, consider subscribing. If you want to see further content from me, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about Robinhood and M1 Finance. What do you like better? I'd love to know. And I'll catch you all in the next video.